Hello and welcome to PM Studio Small Basic Tutorials number 12. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to do a quadratic equation solver. This was another user request from one of my viewers. Um, just in case those of you who don't know what the quadratic equation is, um, it is a, an equation that pulls its uh, very pulls three variables from the quadratic formula, which is ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Um, it pulls a, b, and c from that, and you plug them into a complex equation, which is b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. And what that does is it gives you the two x-intercepts on when it's plotted on a graph. So let's go ahead and get started right away. Um, we're going to create our first variable, which is negative equals zero, and I'll explain where that comes into play later. We're going to do again equals one. Why I'll do again. The reason why we do do again, or why we even have a variable do again, is um, it's explained right here in the while loop. The while loop will continue to iterate itself as long as do again equals one. So we're going to put in a clause at the very end of the program that asks the user if they want to do another one. And if they don't, we're going to change do again to something besides one. Could be zero, could be two, could be five thousand. It doesn't matter as long as it's not one. The uh, the program will uh, can terminate itself after they say no. So text window. Ugh. Text window dot clear. And again, this is the only clear that we're going to be using in this entire program. Um, the reason why is because when the uh, the while loop iterates itself, it'll clear the screen. So that'll potentially clear up some of our code, so we don't have to have all those monotonous uh, all those monotonous. So uh, what am I thinking of? Uh, clear lines. Okay, so just for the sake of understanding and not getting confused in the code, we're going to go ahead and assign all of our variables the exact same names that they would be in the uh, the equation. And we're going to prompt them to put in A and then put a right line, so text window dot right, and then we're going to create a variable out of that. Let's do all caps. Dot read number. And please keep in mind that read number is for numbers and read is for characters. Because we will be using a read uh, read phrase, or command rather, and then later in the program and we don't want to get those confused. So what I did right here is I just copied that one little, uh, one little segment of code. That's why it's kind of convenient to have your code segmented out. And then I just changed all the variables, so there we go, we have another six lines of code and I barely had to do any work. If a is greater than, and this is where we're going to implement um, the negative, the negative variable. So if b is less than zero, a, if a is less than zero, or b is less than zero, or c is less than zero. If I could type today, then a equals math dot abs a. We're just going to do the same thing. Just going to paste that. Okay. All right. Now we're going to change the variables again. Okay. And I'm sorry, I'm being so sloppy. This is going to be a long tutorial, so I'm trying to get it going as fast as possible. Alright, and then we're going to change our negative variable, the one that we did earlier, to 1, because the only w w possible way that we can um, run this if statement is if any one of the variables is less than 0. So if there's any negative number, then this if statement will um, iterate and it'll um, change them all to their absolute values, which is the distance from zero on a number line. So regardless of where you are, you will be at a positive number. And that's going to be crucial because if you have any negative numbers when you enter it into the program, it's going to give you the wrong answers. Alrighty. So after we go ahead and run that, we are going to do the uh, the actual equation. So x1, actually I need to tab, x1 the reason why we're doing x1 is because we're going to have a second variable called x2 due to the fact that um, quadratic equation solves two uh, two problems b plus 
the square root of all that good stuff, and then b minus the square root of all that good stuff, um, because there's two points on the number line, or two points on the graph in which x can intercept with most parabolas. So we're just going to go ahead and do this. Uh, let me see. x1 equals b plus math dot square root math.power, and I will explain this after I'm done typing it, 2 comma b. Minus 4 times. Okay. And then we're going to round it, so... Alright, so what did I do here? Um, basically what I did is I... Excuse me one second. Basically what I did is I, um, I took the entire equation and I laid it down on a singular line. So here we have b plus the square root of uh, b plus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, which is minus 4ac, and then divided by 2a. So basically, in essence, what I did is I laid out the entire quadratic equation onto a singular line. And then since not all of them will come out even, I, um, I rounded it up just so that we get a round number every single time, which is what most teachers will be looking for. And then we're just going to redo this, change the variables, and change the sign on the b, so b minus. And we have our other quadratic equation. Now we're going to do uh, the negative, if negative equals 1, then x1 equals x1 times negative 1. And the same thing with x2. And the reason why I'm doing this is after we get the absolute value and we put in all real no or all positive numbers into the equation, um, if there was a negative number and we put in all positive numbers, it's going to give you the reverse or the inverse of what you uh, what the actual answers are. So, for instance, for the uh, the test equation that we're going to be plugging in after I finish the program, which is six, eleven, and thir negative thirty-five, um, if you plug those in and you have the uh, you don't have this uh, grouping right here. Um, it will print out 5 and negative 4, which are not the answers. The actual answers are negative 4 and 2. So, if, But if you do have this clause right here, and you plug it into the equation, it'll give you 4 and negative 2, which is the exact opposite. So when we finish the equation, if there was a negative number, we have to uh, flip around the signs on both of them. So doing this will effectively make that 4 and negative 2 flip over to negative 4 and 2, which is the right answer. Okay. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and uh, print out the answers now that we have them all arranged. So text window dot right line x equals and notice how I put a space after the equals sign because if you don't it's going to do space equals x1 after you uh, after you plug in x1 whatever x1 is it'll print it right next to the equals sign. You don't want it so you want that space there so it goes space or x equals x1. It'll look neater. All right, so, and then we're going to do the plus sign, x1 plus another quote, and then another space, and x equals, and then another space after the equal sign. So there's a space after the x1, and then there's going to be a space before the x2. And close the parentheses, text window, dot, right line. And now, after we've printed out their answers, they can have the time to write it down, and we're going to prompt them to re reiterate the while loop. So, would you like? Would you like to perform another equation? A answer. And it doesn't really matter what variable name you give the answer. You could do capital A for all that it matters. But again, just so that no one else gets confused, we're just going to make the uh, the variables as self-explanatory as possible. If